All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the program tonight. Got a very special match going on. It is the Team Covenant Aces playoffs round one. Um, and it is actually a rematch of the Team Covenant Open Final. It is a side slip and Tex, or Dallas Parker, as some of you may know him as. And it looks like he just showed up, so we should get rolling here soon. But while we're waiting, let's go ahead and take a peek at the list. And for anyone who uh, doesn't remember, um, their matchup in the Team Covenant Open, uh, which... I don't know if this was directly because of them or not, but uh, basically started the whole Wave 5 meta of the two super ship lists that we basically saw dominate the brief Wave 5 meta. I say brief because there really were no major tournaments held during that period. Uh, the, we did catch the first short portion of the store championship se season being just wave five but compared to how long wave four lasted mainly due to the fact that the wave five ships didn't last or didn't come out until considerably later than you know they probably should have uh, it was a pretty quick a pretty quick pretty short meta it only lasted from the end of worlds until about early march of 2015 but those were the two dominant lists that we saw uh, the two lists that they ran went on to basically become what the two dominant lists of that era were, which was Corn and Dash and Phantom Decimator. Uh, and there were others, but those were the two main lists we saw. And Tex, or Side Slip, was running a bit of a variation of the Super Dash, and I actually ran his list quite considerably. I played it in a store championship, and I just played it in another tournament only on Saturday, actually, and I really liked it, but uh, as I, the more I played it, the more I found that it did struggle against uh, high mobile ships like Phantoms or Sunterfell, and really the Phantom Decimator overall was really a tough matchup for it. So it was no surprise that Sideslip inevitably lost that match to Tex. And he was running, he had Corrin, Fire Control System, Push the Limit, Hole Upgrade, R2-D2, and then Dash, Outrider, HLC, Recon Specialist, and Lone Wolf. And then uh, uh, Tex Dallas was running, I know he had Whisper, Fire Control System, VI, ACD. I don't remember what his crew was. I want to say it was either Gunner or Rebel Captive, and then he had a Ken Kirk with like an engine upgrade, Lone Wolf, Isan, and like one one or two other crew members. But that was generally it. And uh, and so now uh. Excuse me, so now <coughs> we basically get a redux of those two lists with a couple of tweaks, which is kind of interesting. Some people say, oh, that's to be expected. You know, players like to stay with what they're comfortable with, that they're familiar with. But Tex is, I mean, he's a world-class player. He's typically more an Empire player, no doubt. But, I mean, you look at the guy he made, he made a... Uh, the finals in 2013 running a tie swarm and very nearly won it, mind you. Uh, I think it, Paul Heaver's last B Wing was down to two or three health. It was an incredibly close match. Almost won the world championship running a tie swarm. Comes back the next year in a brand new meta dominated by Phantoms and Fat Hans. Again makes the final eight, uh, losing to the eventual runner up Morgan. Another very impressive showing. And then he runs a Phantom Decimator and makes, uh, ends up winning the Team Covenant Open, pretty much the biggest online tournament we've had uh, over the past uh, year. And he also just won a 
large store championship down in California about a month ago running uh, a soon to fell Chirino list. So, um, he's definitely a guy who's not a one-trick pony. He really can mix it up. And he actually is kind of here, actually, now that I, I think about it. Because he's running Vader instead of Whisper. And some people would say, well, that's not much of a change. Well, I think a lot of higher level players would agree that Whisper and Vader are two... Uh, they're a lot different. You got D-Cloak, dials are way different, their uh, abilities are way different. Uh, so, it's a redux with a tweak, but it's still fairly different. And then instead of Ken Kirk, he's got Chirino, VI, Rebel Captive Gunner, Eson Engine. Pretty typical Chirino loadout. Uh, I myself prefer Determination over VI, especially if you're going to attack on Gunner, but I think it's going to pay dividends for him this game because it means he's going to be able to move after Corrin uh, if, he, if Tex decides to pass initiative, which I believe he will. Because he has the choice since he's at 98 and side slips at 99. And also, uh, I talked about how I ran that 20 yard dash list a while. Uh, it's not the same as the super dash. You don't have the option to boost and barrel roll. Well, you can barrel roll, but you really don't like to, in my experience. You really want to use that recon specialist as much as you can. I, I just hated when I had to burn that barrel roll to use it. And sometimes you have to when you know you're gonna get you're gonna some your opponent's gonna be able to get to range one if you don't, but you really it really hurts your offense and your defense when you have to use it. And in my experience playing this list, the one thing that I really hated to see was a higher pilot skill ship, something that was gonna move after me, that also had the ability to boost. Um I found it was so hard to stay, keep them out of that donut. Uh, that was just the, those are the ships I really hated to face. And I think Slide Slip's very happy that he's not facing Sunter Fell with auto thrusters. I think it feels like Vader's going to be a little bit easier to take down than Fell would have been. Um, but still, and the fact that, well, Corrin's typically going to be shooting before Dash, but. Also, when you have to deal with a rebel captive and you're constantly stressing yourself out, that's frustrating too when you just, you're just you relegated to doing one banks. It makes it even easier for those ships to keep up with you. But Corrin's typically going to be the one shooting first. So, um, and I again, I'm not a fan of this Corrin loadout either. I understand why guys go with it. It makes him a little more nimble. But I just liked to tank Corrin up with push the limit hole upgrade. I felt like it made him incredibly tanky. Uh, and he was more he was more susceptible to whisper, and that's the big reason my side slip decided to go here. I think he was scared about facing a whisper, so he wanted Corrin to be able to shoot before it and move after it and be able to boost if necessary. But in this matchup, I think he would have rather gone with the old corner. Although the VI will help him against Vader, so a pretty classic matchup of. The two elite ships here. Uh, Morgan likes side slip. I talked to side slip before the match. He said he feels a lot more confident going into this than he did in his uh, TCO finals game against Tex. I think he was well aware that was a bad matchup and he was probably going to lose that anyway. But so to hear him say that he's a lot more confident. I think that speaks uh, some volumes because he's not the kind of guy to just say, "Oh yeah, I'm confident." Like I don't. I think he would tell the truth. So, um, but that said, I still uh, it's really close. I still think I'm gonna go with Tex as my pick. Uh, I feel like overall, he's just a world-class player, and Slide Slip is very good. I mean, he made the finals of the Team Covenant Open, which is incredibly impressive, and now here he is, he's the two-seed, 
going into the final four here in the Team Covenant Aces. Very impressive again. Um, but I think overall, I think Tex is a little bit better. Not to say Side Slip can't win. I would, but if I was putting money on it, I'd probably give Tex a 55% chance <laughs> of uh, pulling this out. I know that that's not that's kind of a lame cop out, but um, Rebel Captive, yeah. I don't know what a whole lot. I'm kind of surprised at the Adrenaline Rush and the Rebel Captive. Uh, the Adrenaline Rush sort of just leans itself to say, I'm just kind of banking on Vader not lasting too long, which he probably, I don't think he will. I think Side Slip's probably going to go for him hard. He doesn't want him to hang around and keep hammering away with that ATC. Um, but I just, I like Predator a lot more on Vader with the ATC, or even without it. Um, I think that adrenaline rush is just, it's sort of something I like to see more on someone who's going to go down rather more quickly, like Hal Runner, for example. Uh, and then the Rebel Cap, I don't know what this is going to do. Because with Corrin, usually you're wanting to try to do greens anyway with R2. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of an effect this has. Um, in the the game that Tex played in the final store championship, he was going against dual IG-88s, and I felt like his Rebel Captive was really the hero of that game, because uh, those 88s were running, they both had push the limit, they were do both doing some Sengors loops, some of them got double stressed, and they weren't able to not only perform actions, but then they had they weren't able to get their advanced sensors going either. They really were action just shut down for the entire match, and that was really the difference in the game. I felt like uh, I don't think it'll have as much of an effect this time because none of Side Slip's guys are going to be intentionally stressed. They're really not going to be stressed at all very much throughout the course of the game, so I don't think it'll have much of an effect. Gunner as well, I don't know if that's going to do a whole lot, because yeah, on Corrin, like, you got to get big damage. It's got to come in bunches. It can't just come in little one-hit things. That's sort of what Gunner does. It, it sort of just ensures you're going to get a hit. It's not a big damage dealer like something like Opportunist. Vader, on the other hand, can do out some damage, but, uh, again, with... Out having Predator, I mean, he's going to have to get some lucky roll, because if you roll blank focus with Vader, well, it's like, and your focus evaded, well, then what the hell are you going to do? Do you just burn the lock? Do you just focus and keep it? Uh, it's a tough, tough situation. I think it kind of depends on where he's at, who's got shots on him. But again, the one thing Tex does have going for him is that he's going to move, both these guys are going to move after Dash. Cherno can cover a lot of ground, and he can boost. Vader can cover a lot of ground. He can boost and barrel roll if he wants to. But again, the thing is, is he doesn't want Dash to hang around. Because if it comes down to Cherno and Dash, or even Vader and Dash, or sorry, Cherno and Corrin, or Vader and Corrin, I think Sideslip would, would live with that. I think he'd be fine even if Chirino had like something like 14 health left because it's just going to be really hard for him to be able to wear Corrin down. Even though he is going to be moving after him, that would help. But it would be hard in that situation for Chirino to be able to wear him down. Um, I wish I could have asked Tex a couple of questions about how he feels about the matchup, but suffice to say, these guys are about as well prepared for this as they could have, and uh, those two guys who have played in a high-pressure situations before, I'm not sure if Side Slip uh, played, went to Worlds. I don't know what Side Slip's name is. I think it's Anthony, but I'm not Positive. Yeah, 
Anthony. Maybe that might not be his name, but for some reason, I don't feel like he went to Worlds. Whoops. Okay. So we got the... I'm guessing side slip went with the three debris. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> but uh, I think Tex probably went with the small. It would make sense. Dash loves the debris, especially this dash. And uh, the thing, I, the thing I loved to do with dash when I ran this list is take, yeah, you take your three big debris and you just put them in a triangle, right? Like these are. Um, who took initiative? Yep, so text passed initiative. Um, ah, I wish I could have seen where side slip put. I would be surprised if side slip placed that asteroid. I would lend myself to believe he probably placed one of these. But anyway, I love putting them in a little triangle like that, and then just running dash right at it, and just park him right in the middle of it, and say, "Hey, if you want to come for him." You're going to have to not only come into this little field, but try to get out of it, too. And I can go any way I want. I can go over them. I can get behind them. And it's just going to be a pain in the ass for you to try to go around them. Um, and I I would always set up with Dash in the middle facing this way. And then Corrin on the side set up for the Joust. Sometimes, if there was a superior jousting force, like a swarm, I'd put Corrin over here and actually come dash right up the gut or or maybe right, right about here if they were set up here for the joust get in one pot shot and then break away like this and then get in one more shot before i came behind them saying either you gotta chase dash into these asteroids or you gotta let me get in two free shots before you engage corin and i've already weakened your force and now you're engaged in corin at long distance and he's able to turtle up and do his thing uh, but side slip going for a bit of a different uh, starting position here I'm interested to see if side slip is going to want to joust and uh, I th I think Tex is going to come out hard and fast he's going to want to close the distance quickly and uh, whether that be on Dash or Corrin, I think he would go for Corrin first. Because, like I said, it's, it's his best chance to get him early, concentrate fire on him, and take him down. You don't want to let him just regenerate those shields over and over and over again. Uh, but I don't think he's going to know for sure until he sees what kind of setup Side Slip goes with. And yeah, the fact that it just makes such a difference when you can boost and you move after him because if Dash comes out with a 3 bank, you can come out with like a 2 forward and then boost to get better positioning. Uh, you can just do a whole lot more. And it's just, you're always on pins and needles around that Dash wondering what your opponent's going to do. And Corrin, with that, he loves facing those ships. Guys like Fat Han and Chirino, who get that free evade and just rely on that heavily for defense. Because with that double tap, he can really take advantage of that and put the hurt on. Um, I found that was one of my strengths against going these Phantom Decimator lists, is that Corrin's double tap is a great counter to those Decimators with Isan. Well, your left hand's free. Alright, let's see if any of yours. My right hand's grip. Taunt is gone. <gasps> Alright, Dash, what do you got? <laughs> He's going four forward. Hmm. It's gonna double focus. And 
X is not messing around. He's not going to waste any time. He's going right forward with the five forward. And that would probably lend me to believe that Chirino is going to do the same with a four forward, his fastest move. Uh, yep. And I think you'll probably see a boost here from Vader. I think side slips. Just wanting to make sure he's not going to boost into range three. That would be death. But I think I think he's going to be safe if he does. And then he's going to be in pretty good position to, I think, after Tech's boost, which I think he will, uh, it's going to put Sideslip in a tough position. I think he's going to boost straight here. That would be my guess. Come on. Come on. Let's think about it. And he does. The one forward. Yeah, that's not going to be in range of dash. And then he's just going to focus, play it safe. Now, let's see what Korn does first. And Korn goes one forward. Huh. So now, <clears throat> yeah, four forward, and probably see a boost from Cherno here. So now it gets interesting because side slip. He knows that Corin's in a bit of a tough spot here. He's kind of trapped in this little corner. I don't, I don't really know what Tex is thinking about. I think he just went to weigh all his options, but I'd be surprised if he did anything but a boost here. I think he's just thinking, trying to decide between a boost straight or a boost right. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious now that Tex is going to go right for Corin. And... Uh, I'm wondering if Side Slip anticipated that 5 and 4 forward there, and that's why he did that 1 forward with Corrin, so he could kind of hide him behind that little asteroid there. Because now, if Tex does want to go right for him, it kind of puts Vader in a tough spot. Because if he 3 left banks, Vader does, and Corrin goes 5 forward, well now Dash, like Dash is probably either going to 1 right bank or 3 right turn. Then Dash might have a shot on you. Well, maybe not. I think... I think what I'd probably do here if I was side slip... Is I'd probably just one right turn... Dash... And then just one right bank... Corrin. And... So that way, if Vader comes for Corrin... You know, he's going to be shooting a bit long range through that asteroid. Probably not going to be able to get much damage. And he's going to be facing this direction, most likely. He might go straight. Um, but even if he does, I think... This is what I basically call would call sniper bait. Well, what I would do with dash is that you basically... I mean, side slip's doing a little different than I'd do. But basically, you'd let Corrin come in with his joust... He's going to shoot once long range, then go one more, and then get in a big fat double tap, and then just run the hell away. And all the other ships, the jousting ships, are K-turning, and coming back, chasing Corrin, trying to finish him off before he regenerates a bunch of shields. And all the while, Dash is just hanging out right here in the middle, just hammering away with his HLC. And I think that's kind of what Sideslip is setting up here, is that even if Corrin doesn't get a shot... He feels like he's survivable enough that Dash can probably wear down Vader before they're able to finish off Corrin. Because, again, understand, in this spot, it's a tough spot for Tex because if Vader 
Like, if he only had two forwards, he's just going to be shooting at range three through a rock at Corrin, which probably ain't going to do crap. And he'll be able to get a lock so he can load up his uh, ATC and stash it for next turn. But he's probably not going to be able to do any damage to Corrin, whereas Dash is going to get a nice shot here on Vader. Um, and while Cherno will get a shot, it might not do enough really to really hurt Dash, like or to hurt Corrin. Like to really hurt Corrin, you got to hit him for more than one damage, because you know this one is getting regenerated by R two. Um, so that's the if he goes two forward, that's his problem, or three forward. But if he goes five forward to try to cut Corrin off. Uh, if Corrin just one banks, he can just like barrel roll back and get behind that asteroid again. Um, and then if Vader, or if he, or if Corrin's got a two right turn saved, then he can boost right or barrel roll right and get out of his arc entirely. And that would really suck for Tex. And then the problem is if he three left banks, uh, and Corrin just five forwards out of there, well, then you're not going to get a shot either. Uh,. But all that said, Chirino is in a really good spot here. And he's able to he's gonna be able to get right on Corrin's ass. He's gonna be able to move after him, which is hugely beneficial. And he's gonna be getting some good hits on him. And I've watched in the games that I've watched Tex, when he's run this decimator, Vader, Sunter, Whisper, whatever, he's very judicious with this small ship. Uh, he's not going to do anything super aggressive, typically. Although I've never seen him fly Vader. I've only seen him fly Whisper and Soonter. But I just I don't think he's going to do something crazy here and leave Vader out to dry. I think I'd be inclined to think he's going to 3 left bank Vader and just try to make sure Dash doesn't get a shot. Because he could always 3 left bank boost right, and then either barrel roll to ensure he's going to get out of arc, or just take a lock on Corrin so he's got it for next turn. Or maybe this turn. This turn too. Side slip has unset his dials. Thinking about it. Anyone has any comments or questions, go ahead and type them in the chat bar. Don't message me on Vassal, though. I hate when people do that crap. I mean, normally you can. Just <laughs> not in the middle of a stream. If you message me, I'm just going to ignore you. So don't even bother. Well, your left hand's free. And right hand grip. Or, it would be really tricky if Tex goes for a, I guess you would call it a bait and switch, I'm not sure, where he basically three banks Cor or Vader, and then boosts, because I'd be really surprised if Dash did anything but a one right turn here, because he knows Chirino probably can't get into his arc from a three, well, maybe he could with, see, this is what I'm talking, this is why you hate this matchup with Dash, because they're going to move last, they have the full range of their dial, and good dials, mind you. I mean, the Decimator, it can't K-turn, but look at that. It's got pretty much everything else except for the hard turn or the 5 forward. It's a good dial. Uh, and then Vader's got a good dial, too. He's missing the hard turn and the straight one as well, but in terms of covering distance, it's not like a B-wing where it's got like a red 3 bank. Or a red 4 forward. Like, they can cover a lot of distance, which is what you hate against Dash. Or as Dash. You want... Oh, he goes for the 3 bank. Well, or sorry, the 3 turn. That didn't... That actually went a little bit shorter than I thought it would. So... That's not as surprising, but I still think... Yeah, he's not going to get a shot on Vader now. No way. Because even if that 3... He's still in arc now, but he can either... I think you'll probably see Vader take a lock right here on Corrin to stash it for next turn, and then probably barrel roll left 
out of Dash's arc. And that's why I felt like Dash was going to one right turn instead of that three right. And I know why he did it. He didn't want Vader to get inside his donut, but I felt like I would have one right turned and then one right banked or two right banked Corrin. So Corrin could have been, could have screened for Dash in case Vader went for him. And then he would have been on Vader's tail moving after him. Think that's gonna be really close. Vader might he might just be out of target lock range of Corrin at this point. And now he's thinking He's gonna check, might as well. I mean he just can't. Side slip is saying Hallelujah. <laughs> So now the question is, can Vader boost, then take a lock, and get out of Dash's arc? And it's going to be really close. I mean, can you boost straight? I mean... Because I'm pretty sure Chirino is doing a 4 forward here, so he doesn't want to block him. That wouldn't be good. But... Oh, well, he's going to target lock Dash. That's kind of interesting. I guess it feels like it can't hurt. Because I'm probably not going to get do any damage to Corrin. So I might as well just... TL dash, if I change my mind uh, this next turn during dials, and then I'll just roll out of his arc and make sure he doesn't get anything. I'd, kind of be, I'd be surprised if he didn't barrel roll left as backward as possible. I don't really see why you'd do that. Unless, the only way would be if you anticipate Corrin doing like a two right turn. Because now, if you try to pursue a two right turn, it's just going to put you right in front of that asteroid. Whereas that, you'll probably be good. And I feel like that's Vader's most obvious move next turn, is just a two right. Or the one bank of Corrin, two, two hard turns. Uh, he's gonna three right bank and boost. Hmm. That's yeah. That's pretty good positioning for Corin. Because now Tex has the decision to either boost here and get to range one, so he doesn't have to shoot through that rock or take a target lock. And also. If he boosts, it's kind of going to, it'll give him some better positioning for next turn. But, if he boosts right, I think that would put him into dark, which you definitely don't want to do. So, I think he's probably just going to take a, take a lock here. Luke Rose asking, who picked Tex, not Supreme, the old Kelvin. <laughs> that was basically where I'm at. I th he might have said the same thing, didn't he? What did he say? Uh, uh, he didn't say. Huh. Oh, no, predicted Tex. Yeah. I predicted Tex, but, uh, Again, I I would not be surprised if Sideslip wins. It's a pretty 
pretty good matchup. And it's still looking pretty even right here. Because even though... Even if Corrin doesn't do any damage here, uh, he's going to be able to load up his fire control system. Yeah. I think that would have been dumb to just boost there and eat three or four damage from dash on HLC shot. There's only no point in doing that. So this is going to be a three on four. Statistically speaking, it will miss most of the time. Slide slip's going to roll 1.5 hits, and Tex will roll 1.5 evades. But slip gets a little bit lucky, and even though that's one damage, that's one damage on a 35 point ship. So. That's actually a pretty big deal. When you consider seven hit points, that's basically five points right there that Side Slip has earned himself. And this is going to be a three on four. And if you're Side Slip here, you know you're going to eat one. You hope that you just take one damage. And now you spend that lock. He's gonna he's gonna spend it. Ooh, now he's definitely gonna spend it, cause Yep. And you're gonna and Corrin is gonna take two. And that's that's not what you want with Corrin. You're fine to take one, because you can regen it. And two is not horrible either, but mm -hmm. So now we've got an interesting dilemma. Interesting. And this is, these are the spots where these great players like really make their mark. Uh, when you see them, like I said earlier, when they, they pilot these glass cannons, uh, they are so careful to not put them in a bad spot where they just get melted in one turn. I think most people are thinking right now Vader is probably going to two right, but that just seems like so obvious. I wouldn't be surprised if Tex just like three three right banks him or something. And the big question is, what do you do here uh, with Corrin? Do you just two left bank and run away? Do you three straight and run away? Oh, he's gonna go for the double tap. Oh, and he gets three! Holy crap! Vader's gonna need some dodges here. Oh, he only gets one. That hurts. Vader is down to two. That is some bad luck for Tex to start. So now, the fact that Corrin did double tap lends me to believe that he is just going to run. And, uh, man. And that is really... Because now I think there's no way that Tex is going to three-bank Vader. I think he knows that Vader's got to get some shots in here, and he's got to try to kill Corrin right here, right now. Because he knows Corrin can't shoot, so Vader is basically... I think he's just going to go for broke right here. And Vader should actually be at two. They got that wrong. But I think he's just going to go for it right here with a two right turn. And try to get a fat, fat one from Chirino and Vader. It's going to be hard, though. What, I, what I'm actually predicting is... So, Dash is going to move first. He's going to... You know, he's doing something coming this way. Could be any thing. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. Three bank, hard turn. Either or. Um, but I feel... I think Corn is probably going to two bank. Because... I, I feel like... Vader has to hard turn here. Uh, he's not going to K-turn. That'd be stupid. I don't even think he'd clear that. I think he'd be off the board. Even though he does have Adrenaline Rush, I, I don't think he's going to K-turn. I think that'd be too close. Um, so the big question is, 
text two turns. Does he barrel roll right to ensure he gets a shot? Or does he just target lock focus because of calling two banks and then boost, he's going to get out of that arc. So I think Texas thinking two right turn with Vader and then dependent upon where Corrin, where he ends up exactly, he might take a barrel. But then if he barrel rolls and Corrin two banks and clears, then yeah, he's just, Tex is in a bad spot here because he doesn't want Corrin to bump him. He's just like, he's a little bit clo too close here with Vader than he'd like. He doesn't want Corrin to bump because that means only Chirino is going to get a shot. But he's so close, he knows there's a plethora of moves that Side Slip could do <clears throat> to get out of Vader's arc, which is really all he wants to do. And he might even 5 forward, actually. 5 forward and then boost. I wouldn't be surprised if he did that. Because then, because what can Chirino do here? Uh, probably going to see a 3 right turn or a 1 right bank, I would imagine. If he 5 forwards, he's going to be way out at range 3. And plus, with a boost, he might get out entirely. So, even though he wouldn't regen, I think he still would know he'd, he's safe enough that Corrin's not going to die. And then he can just run him way the hell up here and just let Dash hold off Chirino for a while. Let Corrin come back and finish the job. So, Tex is really in a bad spot right here. And actually, with. Vader's lock on dash. I wouldn't be surprised if Vader just like two turned and then one banked or boosted and then just focused. But ugh, could you dodge an HLC shot if you did that though? I don't think so. That's why he's in a bad spot. He just got he got really unlucky there. Cause like he almost if Dash gets an HLC shot, particularly with Lone Wolf. He's got a great opportunity to kill Vader if Vader does anything but turtle. And yeah, he's going to one bank. And now Dash is going to get a shot on anyone. And that's why I felt like Corrin probably would two bank. Because then if he boosts, then Dash's lone wolf is going to be uh, activated. Whereas if he goes the other way. So there's the two turn. Where does that put him exactly? Right there. You know, I would, I might take, ooh, would you roll here and then boost right? That would be inside of Dash's donut, I think. But the only thing about, I guess, because, you know, because then Vader would live another day, because, you know, Corn can't shoot, but then Dash can just take a shot on Chirino, and you're really not going to be able to do any damage to Corrin. If he boosts... Yeah. I don't... Ugh. Just a bad spot. I think if it was me, though, as bad as I want Corrin dead, there's just... There's too many things he can do here. I have no idea what's on that dial. He could 5 forward and boost... He could 2-bank and boost. He rolls right. And now, I feel like he has to go for dash here because even if he takes an evade, There's still a chance Dash could kill him, and I just don't. I just don't really think it behooves him to do it. I'd be shocked if he didn't boost and just go for Dash here. Oh wow! I don't think he's going to actually. Now that he measures it backwards like that, I think he's gonna try to get a shot on Corrin. But the thing is, I just don't see how that. The only thing, the only way he's going to get shot is if Corrin won forwards. But I just don't see how there's any way Corrin would do that. 
I feel like he's either going to two bank, and he's probably going to be able to boost out of his arc. Maybe he's hoping Corrin two left banks, but even that, he'd probably be able to boost right and get out. Three forward boost, five forward, he's gone. I mean, I understand you don't want him to hang around, but I would just be shocked if he's somehow able to get a shot on Corrin here. Because if Corrin two banks right there, that's going to be close, but he might bump. And really, that's the worst if he bumps. Because I don't think Chirino will be able to kill him. And, and then Corrin's going to be in a great position to just run the hell away. Yeah, he's going to boost. Maybe... The way he brought it back like that is he's hoping Corrin's got a two or a three straight there and now he's gonna bump. Which is which is possible. He could have three straighted. But he goes for the five, yep. And probably either gonna evade or boost here. I think I boost. Yep. And that will probably there's a good chance that puts him out of Chirino's arc. And now, if Tex... Nope. Man, if Tex would have three turns, that would have been a world-class move, because then he might still be able to, but... Oh, if, oh, man. If he boosts here, he might be able to get in that donut. And that would be big time for him. But that is going to be really freaking close. That is going to be so close. I think he would get in, though. Wow, that's going to be so close. Yeah, he's going to... Might as well. Oh, that's going to be so close. I think he's like, wow, I don't know. It looks like he might be just narrowly in. Oh, wow. That is range one. Is it? Oh my god. That is right on it. I think that's in though. If you look at it right there. Come on, you slow ass piece of shit. Yeah. That is like inside by a pixel, I think. If it was one pixel back, it would be like right under the white line. That is ridiculous. But, and this is why this dash build is so fun, because he is so defensive with that lone wolf Double focus, and I think he is going to have Lone Wolf activated. I don't, I don't really think he's going to take much damage here. That's three. Yep, focus evade. You're usually going to be able to get those two evades more times than not if you have the focus with with your one reroll. I found more times than not you'll usually be able to get two evades. Now Vader is going to get a 3 on 2 with his ATC. But completely unmodified though. Oh wow, 3 crits. But all shields. So, can slide slip dodge 2 of them. And a reroll. He's going to check for Lone Wolf. I think he's got it though. Yep. Oh, it doesn't get it. So he's going to take three damage altogether from those two hits, or two attacks. 
Well, now... Again, this is why this game is so great, because... Uh, I felt like Side Slip was at a huge advantage there at the start of that turn, but now... Tex is really all but even it up, as far as I'm concerned. He hates that Corrin got away, but still... Got to be happy with that exchange. Now it's going to be really interesting. Because Vader has that adrenaline rush. So I'd be surprised if Vader did anything but a 4k. So if you're side slip, do you get tricky here? And do a 1 left turn and then barrel roll left? Or do you do a 1 forward? Or maybe a 2 forward? Try to block Chirino from getting to Corrin. And ensure you're going to have a shot on uh, Vader. But actually, I don't even know if that would get a shot, because then you might be able to get, Vader might be able to get back into range one again. Got a whole lot of options here if you're dash. You can three bank, basically ensure that you're going to get a shot, but you might not get that lone wolf if you do that. You can three left. 3 left turn or 3 left bank. Go for those debris fields. I think that might that might be a bit of an amateurish move though because then you're probably not going to get that lone wolf. What you do with Corrin here is really interesting. You just do a 1 forward, do a 2 forward, do a 2 left turn. You want to start regenerating that quickly and get him back in. But you're also mindful that you know Vader can K-turn and then Chirino can just 3 right turn and boost and be right back on you. And then you're in trouble again. Uh, so that's what I was thinking dash might block. I think if I'm dash, I'm going to three right bank here. Because if Vader two, if Vader hard turns, I don't care if he does that. He's not going to get shit. And then if you 4Ks, I know he can't boost and get back into me. I'll at least get a shot on him. And I've got a chance to block Chirino if he does the hard turn. Which I think is the most obvious choice. For Chirino here. So I think that's what I'd do if I was dash. I'd three right bank, and then I'd just like three forward with Corrin. I think three forward with Corrin, take a boost, or maybe just two forward, then boost left. And then at least he'd be back to at least four then. Then he could probably K turn, then regen the last one, and then get back into it. Um, I believe they have to keep their lists all the way through. That's what Morgan was saying on the post, is that he likes Tex, Tex's list the most out of the four that are left in the field. Uh, do I like Tex to take it all well? Morgan is very talented. I'm a big fan of his. Um... And I, I love Oiken with Dauntless now that they did a Rata on it. Um, I think I think Gunner is a bit redundant with him. I would have... Meh, meh. But what else do you do is a thing. Because the thing is, you're always going to get an action with Dauntless, I mean, typically. Now, sometimes you might boost, I guess, but... I just feel like with the guaranteed action in Predator, you're usually going to get three hits. I just feel like Gunner's a bit redundant, but I guess for five, like, well, where else are you really going to go for five points? So, I guess you could have gone with Prockets, but, um, but I like that Vader loadout. Um, and he is playing Kinetic. Kinetic's a really tricky player. He's got... Uh, this right here is my favorite IG-88 loadout. I act, I prefer A to C. I know a lot of guys aren't a fan of his, but I like A. I feel like he helps you with swarms, which can kind of cause the 88 some trouble. Uh, 
But this exact loadout sometimes maybe push the limit instead of Predator, and then maybe inertial dampeners on both, and then seismics on one of them. But really, that gen I feel like that's the best 88 loadout if you're gonna go for the symmetrical 88s anyway. That's what I prefer. So I like that. Uh, but that said, he's gonna have a hard time keeping Vader and Ark. And Oiken is just going to be a pain in the ass with Rebel Captive and just constantly going right at him. That's going to be a really fun match. Uh, so then if Morgan won and it came down to him and Tex, mm, I don't know. That'd be a really good matchup. That'd be a, that'd be a close one. It'd basically would be a mirror match. Vader versus Vader, Desi versus Desi. And then how does Side Slip match up against those two guys? I would... I would actually prefer side slips list over both of these. I really would, even though those auto thrusters would be a pain in the ass against Dash. Uh, I don't think those 88s have enough firepower to be able to wipe corn off the board. I mean, they they both have to get consecutive shots and consecutive rounds. You know, like sort of like what we got here. So, um. So he goes for the three right bank. But then he barrel rolls. I'm kind of interested at that, or I'm intrigued by that. I'm kind of surprised. I thought he'd just double focus. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure why. Maybe he just wanted to clear some space, but put some space between him and Dash to make sure he got that lone wolf instead. And this is what, when I, for me, playing this list, I found that when you're playing a great player, uh, that's what they would put the screws into you, and that you never got your lone wolf and your recon. I mean, you would sometimes, but it wasn't like every single time you would get. And that's ideally what you want. That's when Dash is just brutal when he gets lone wolf and recon rolling. You hate to have to burn that barrel roll, and but yeah, when I playing against the really good players, I found that that's what they would do to you is that they would never let you get both it was almost like you had to take one or the other but I'm, I'm still shocked he would do that i'm not really sure maybe he was worried that the three bank wouldn't put in enough distance between vader if vader k turned um and now tex has a real tough decision that's not i think he was hoping vader would go a little bit further so he wouldn't have that debris kind of sitting in front of him. He's in a bad spot here. Because if he barrel rolls right back, he's still going to be outside of range 1 a dash. He can't boost straight. I think he's thinking about either a boost left and an evade, or just a complete turtle. Um, it's not cheaty because that's that's basically what you can do in real life is that you can just you set your one template down and then you can just slide your ship back and forth. So I don't I don't have any problem with that. I think that's fine to do that. Well, your left hand's free and your right hand's grip. <laughs> yeah, he's just in a bad spot, plain and simple. And if he one left banks and then evades, if Corrin does do a two left turn and then boosts, then he's pretty much fucked. If I mean, Vader's gone at that point, and then the match is really all but over. It's going to be, unless Chirino would maybe be able to put away Dash or Corrin or one or the other, but...
I'm really surprised he didn't go for dash with the K-turn. Because... Now he's kind of going towards this side of the map where Corrin is. And Corrin's going to shoot first on their next exchange. Whereas if he was against Dash, even if he wasn't able to get inside his donut, he'd still be able to get off one last fuck you shot before he went down. Whereas against Corrin, Corrin's going to be able to shoot him first. And... Yeah, now what do you do? Do you take the evade or do you hop behind... That debris field. I guess you just take the evade because it's a guaranteed evade instead of, yeah. I don't really see the point in doing that, though, because... Like, range does nothing against the HLC of Dash. So, wow. What a gutsy move to K-turn there with Corrin. Ooh, and Chirino's going at him. Now, if you have a decision if you're Chirino, you do not want Dash or Corn to regenerate those damn shields and come back at you. But if you boost, not only are you taking away your target lock action, but you're just going to boost right out of Dash's donut. Actually, he might still be in it, but. Yeah, he's just. I think you gotta do that there. Just go for dash. And he's got a great chance of getting a crit here. You know, with Chirino, you're almost guaranteed a crit with his ability with a target lock. And if one can get through to dash, that could be huge. He's gonna go to Chirino three on one. Gets two crits. Oh, and Rebel Captive. That's big. You hate getting double stress. Everyone hates the double stress. The dreaded double stress. And he's going to evade one, so he only takes one. You don't mind that exchange. Now he's going to go at dash. Brack. Focus, 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 hit. You, you hate that so much with Chirino. Normally, if you have a focus dash, you wouldn't mind that at all. But now, you just got to TL two of the eyes and hope they're hits. And it gets one. Uh, yeah. Well, that is, that's an illegal move by Tex. I wonder if Side Slip's gonna say anything. He's not, but. Oh, he gets two of AIDS. I can't remember. They addressed this during the TC Open. I don't know if they said it in. with the new errata, but you can't do that with Chirino. You have to declare what dice you're going to target lock. Because if you do those two, you see you get crit hit. Okay, well now I'm just going to use this ability on the third one. But if you had got focus hit, you say, oh, well now I'm just going to... So... I don't know if that's technically illegal or not, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure they address it somewhere in the errata. I'm not going to look now, but maybe I will after the game. Who's here that I could ask? Typo, Doug Kenny Grapus, Juggler.
Well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I guess the TO would declare. Now what do you, do you say? Okay, you have to re-roll that text. You have to go back to one hit three eyes, and then declare which. I mean, if I was side slip, I don't know if he's just being sporty. Or if you didn't really realize it, but I don't see how you could miss that. And I would, I would have called him out and said you can't do that. Uh, you know, it's against the rules. Uh, I think yes, text should say which dice he has to re-roll. But I think it's understood what text was going to re-roll there. I don't see how that's understood, because yeah, even if. Cause I know that was the third focus, so I guess you could look at it like that. Like, well, that was the last one, so that was the one, but you still don't know. So, I feel like you should have declared. But yeah, he wants to keep an eye. The question is... But you don't know what those rerolls are going to be. So if you reroll one, you reroll the first dice, the first eye, and it's another eye. Well, then of course you're going to reroll the next two because you don't want more than one. So Now you can't re you can't roll like two dice at the same time. Like when there's four out, you can't like control select two, and I don't think you can anyway. But so that that's why you have to declare. Because in real life, yeah, you don't pick up your dice and like re-roll them one at a time when you target lock. You know, you pick them all up and throw them down again. But it's mainly the thing because I know they declare. I read it somewhere. I don't know if it was in the errata. Or if someone posted that when the Team Covenant Open was going on. But I remember reading that somewhere that, that you can cannot do that. And I would be... I would really be surprised if Sideslip didn't catch that. I'm kind of inclined to believe that he was just being a good sport. I'll ask when the game is over, but... Um, anyway, in any event, it's over with now, so, moving on, uh, I think Vader's got a K-turn here, I don't see why he would bother doing anything else, although, I think he would probably K-turn and not burn the Adrenaline Rush, because he's probably not going to get a shot anyway, uh, uh, Corrin, probably just one forward, I think, unless you want to try to just block up Chirino, that could be a viable move, but again, you don't know where Chirino's going to go, so I'd be surprised if he did anything other than a one forward. I think I'd probably just one forward Corrin, and then like two right turn dash. Ensure that at least one of them's going to get a shot, and even if dash, even if Chirino is able to get back into dash's donut, you can at least recon it was going to go left. So now that... That leads me to believe... That he's probably looking to try to block... 
Chirino. But if Chirino does like a one forward, Dash is really going to be in a bad spot. And Vader's going to three right turn. Huh. I'm a little surprised at that. I guess maybe he wants to get out of that asteroid clutter, but... Probably just... What's he going to do here? I really felt like he'd just K-turn because I mean, even if Dash, or even if Core in like two banks, you're far enough away, it's going to be like a five green dice attack. You really don't have to worry about getting hit there probably. And then you can just, just green on the next one. But it's really, it's pretty much the same really because now he's probably just going to, well, I don't know if he's going to boost or not. I think I would just boost. I don't really think you have to worry about Corrin. He's just going to focus. What is he going to do? He's going to evade. That's a really cautious move. I would have just boosted. Because even if Corrin two banks, yeah, which he's not going to, I didn't think he would. But even if he had, I mean, that would have been a long range shot. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised at that. Because, like, positionally now, he's way the hell far away. You hate to not get that action from Corrin, though. Because those focus target locks is really where... Oh, and a 4 forward from Chirino. And you know... That's... Yeah, that's why I was shocked at Side Slip's move. Because, like, ideally... That's exactly what you want. If you're Tex. Because now Corrin can't fire... And you're right in Dash's donut. That's why I was... And you're not going to get Lone Wolf from Dash either. That's why... I was really shocked... That Sideslip turned in with Dash like that. And Sideslip saying he's, he can't believe it... I'm, I'm wondering what he was expecting... I guess maybe he felt like he wanted to go... I guess he felt like maybe he would go one forward so he could shoot Corrin and be safe from Dash because he doesn't want Corrin to hang around. But now it's coming down to... Now you're in some trouble if you're a side slip here because Corrin is still stressed. He's still not back to full health. Uh... And even though you've significantly weakened Vader, I mean, Dash is on his last legs here. He's going to... He's probably going to take at least... He's, well, he's going to take one for sure here. But he's probably going to take a crit. Which is bad news bears against Dash. There's so many crits. Well. Yeah, he's just going to gun her. He's not going to bother. I'm kind of surprised at that. I would just take a crit and... Just do it anyway. Like he might get two blanks. You never know. Yeah, might as well just go for it and see if you get a crit. Cause you don't have a target lock, so you're probably not gonna get multiple hits. Yeah, he's just gonna do it. Might as well. Nope. So. And now he gets the money one. Oh, with two focuses. That's a clutch roll. Only going to take one crit. Minor hole breach. Well, that's about the best one you could have hoped for if you're dash. I mean, that really is. I can't really think of one other one that you would rather have, to be honest. He's really never going to do a red move. Uh, like, honestly, what else would you rather have if you're dash? That's... Seriously, like the best one, pretty much. So, but he still in a bad way. Because now, I mean, he cannot. I understand why he would do the left turn. Like, positionally, you don't really want Dash to just run way the hell away. 
but I, I'm still, but I mean, you kind of do though, because Corrin is fine on his own against just Chirino. Like, he'll lose a shield or two, but he can just get it back, and then you can just work your way back in. Uh, but he's in a, such a horrible spot now. Because you basically have to, if you four forward, you basically know that Chirino's going to bump. I mean, I think, actually... But a four forwards, I don't think is gonna make it. So you basically have to bump here. There's nothing you can do. I don't think a three left bank's gonna make it. I don't think a three hard turn's gonna make it. You basically have to bump. And then you know Chirino's probably just gonna one left bank. And he's probably gonna stay in your donut. Although that would be close. No, he would totally still stay in his donut if like, really, no matter what dash bumps here. Uh, I mean, this is really an ideal situation for Tex. Because he can just, like, two right turn with Vader. Keep him... The only thing that sucks for Tex is that he wasn't able to do one more damage on dash. Because now he's probably not going to be able to kill him this turn. And he'll live one more turn, but really, he's in such a great spot. Corrin is still stressed. And what can Corrin do? Can he two right bank? I don't think he would do that. Because you could two right bank and then barrel roll back and maybe get a shot on Vader. But... Yeah, he might do that, actually. Because your only other option is just a three straight or left bank run away. He might actually do that. But he doesn't have that lock on Vader. He moved it to Chirino. He's just in a bad way. Even though Vader's low and he really hasn't done shit all game, Chirino is still alive and kicking and he's in great position. I don't see anything specifically in the stack. Yeah, you reroll them all at the same time. I swear to God, I read it somewhere. Like, whoever was running the TC Open, theorists, and there was one other guy who was doing it. It was stated that you have to uh, declare which ones you're going to do. Yeah, so, in saying that, I think Tex feels like, so I think, or I think Sideslip anticipated that Tex was anticipating Dash to go this way, and so Chirino was probably going to turn into him. That's why he was surprised at the 4 forward, because then, because if he'd gone 4 forward and bumped, then he would have had a range 3 shot at Dash. And would have eaten it himself. Um, 
So I think Sideslip was banking on Chirino turning hard into him, and then Corrin was going to have a big fat range one double tap on him. But. Yeah. I don't know, I still feel like that was kind of a risky move. Because, yeah, it was such a... I felt like... Well, I'm trying to remember what it was now, but... I'd have to run it back, but... I, that's one of those high-risk, high-reward moves. And, yeah, it just didn't work out for side slip, and now he's paying for it. So yeah, Dash got a shot uh, on Vader, and uh, yeah, that was it. And like I said, this is these are the matchups you hate as Dash: higher pilot skill ships that can boost, especially these fat ships. They can cover like so much more ground. It's just. A pain in the ass to play with or play against. Um, and that's why you see a lot of guys were stoked for that Mangler Cannon. I still would run HLC myself. Um, but yeah, Dash is I mean, pretty much a non factor. I mean, Corn really hasn't done much himself either. I think they've both done two damage combined. Dash has done two to Vader, and Corrin's done one to Chirino, one to Vader. But, I mean, it's far from over. It's still not over, not by a long shot. Uh, but I think I would two right bank here with Corrin, barrel roll back, and take a shot at Vader. Although, you know, with Tex, he's being so careful with him that I wouldn't be surprised if Vader just two turns and then turtles. Because he knows he's got the lead. So he knows he can afford to be careful with Vader. He really doesn't need to get him in there and have him start getting some shots in. He can just let Chirino eat up a couple more hits before he commits to Vader. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he just hard turns and turtles him. Which, in that case, there's no way Corrin would do any damage. But again, the flip side is like, well, what else are you going to do with Corrin? Are you just going to three straight? And then just K-turn the next turn? Like, I'd rather just go for Vader now. While Chirin was mopping up Dash. And just have it be... A Corrin, Chirino endgame. Although, I mean, if, if Vader two turns... And Corrin two banks barrel rolls and Turter and Vader turtles, even with a double tap, could you finish him off? Because then you know you know next turn then Vader's just gonna run away and Chirino will be chasing you with chasing Corrin and I'll put you in a bad spot. Look at the viewing gallery we've got here. I think it's great to see the X-Wing community come out and like watch these games. Like everyone comes out to watch Paul Heaver, of course. But I mean, you know, he's really the big name in X-Wing, the two time champ. Uh but it's nice to see them come out and know they're gonna get a great game here from two guys who aren't necessarily as big names, but are still some of the most talented players that we have. Dash with a regular gun, yep. Wishing he had the mangler.
God damn it. Thank you, Lucros. I indeed was still talking. Uh, um, fuck. Yes, if he bumps, there's no way Vader can get to range one. But then, but then the worry is you don't get a focus, and Chirino will probably get a range one shot on you, and you're going to be shooting without a focus. Potentially through the asteroid at... Man, you will be shooting through the asteroid at Vader. Uh, and Vader will probably just be able to turtle up, since Dash is going to have to move first. So that is the concern with that. Uh, so yeah, I think you basically have to intentionally bump Dash. Uh, the real question, I think, is what do you do with Corrin? Do you K-turn and ensure you're going to get a shot on Chirino, but force yourself to double stress? Or do you hard right and go for Vader? Uh, and like I said, just with the way Texas played Vader so cautiously, I think if you five forwards and then boost, I am not sure Corrin would get a shot there with a hard turn and a boost. I think he'd just narrowly miss him. It'll be close, but I think he would miss. So, I think I would probably just K-turn. And, you know, if, I think if Dash intentionally bumps, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Cherno is going to be out of range one as well. So you could get a big fat shot on Chirino before uh, Dash goes down. And really, I don't think Dash is going to go down this turn. He's probably going to go down next turn. Uh, and that would, I mean, with a shot from Corrin with a target lock, and then a shot from Dash, that'd probably take Chirino down to about, let's see, is it 15? Probably take him down to about 11 or 10 if they're able to both get shots. That's going to be close though. But if you figure that's the bank, probably about right there. Oof, that's going to be close. Well, your left hand's free. Boy, they are thinking this over. I don't blame them, but... You don't see... I mean, I play on Vassal all the time. Granted, I don't play in games as high as stakes as these, <laughs> but... Uh, I... I mean, this is... We're seeing 15-minute... 15 minutes on dials. Again, I don't blame them, but it just shows the the agony of the decision they're trying to make here. But I think I think that's probably what you're going to see. I think you're going to see one bank, one left bank. Uh, and Corrin's the wild card. I think Vader's going to five forward. He could one right bank, is either gonna but I think five forward. Dash is probably just gonna bump intentionally. And then Well, I guess Yeah. Because he could go forward with Dash and then K turn with Corin. And that would 
potentially activate Lone Wolf for dash. And then you know Chirino would bump him. And Chirino would have to shoot Corrin, which is what you really want. But then again, you know Vader... So I, I might be inclined to say maybe you do just three forward dash right there. And just live with Vader shooting at him. Because if you can double focus and lone wolf... You know, you're probably only going to take one hit for there, if that. I mean, Vader does not have a whole lot of firepower here. Yeah, and he's going to four forward dash. And unless Chirino two right turns, which I don't think he will, I think, I think that was the optimal move, actually. Even if Vader gets into range one, I I would think that yeah, and here it comes. I still think I still would have done it though. Three right bank. Probably just gonna boost left and focus, and it'll probably it'll probably take like two hits and a crit here. I would imagine. I mean, that's typically what you'll take. But dash can probably. Typically dodge two of them and take only one crit, which, I mean, you'll live with. Now, you hate crits on dash because pretty much every one is bad news bears. Like, the only two crits that you don't mind are the one he already got, uh, Minor Hole Breach, and uh, Weapon Malfunction. That's really it. Every other one. Although, I mean, at this point... He's so jammed in here, you almost wouldn't mind getting a munitions failure. I talked about this a lot in the TCO. We had a lot of uh, people who were either inexperienced players or inexperienced playing with uh, the Outrider. So often you would see guys were able to get in that donut late game, and they found themselves you know, wishing they did get a munitions failure just so they could... Shoot at those pesky, whatever the hell it was, interceptors, phantoms, A-wings. They kept getting inside their donut at the end, just on their tail. And yeah, at this point, you really almost wouldn't mind it. So, Tex, yeah, it's going to boost focus. Not really much else you would have done there. So the big thing here is dash. You just pray to God. I I mean, I can't imagine Tex with two right turn. Oh, and Corwin's going to go for it. Oh, that's going to be close. It's going to... you got to think he's going to boost here. He's just thinking, like... Eh, I don't think he's going to be able to roll right. No. Yeah, he's thinking, like, positionally, if I boost and don't get it, that's really going to suck. Yeah. He's just going to go for it. It's going to be really close.
He's going for it, and... Oh my god. Oh, I don't think he got it. At least Sharon was going to bump, though. But, yeah, no shot for Dash or Korra, and that's going to hurt. And I don't think Dash is going to get Lone Wolf either. No, that's definitely range two. <sighs> Ooh, two of AIDS. Hmm. Ooh, can Corin dodge all? Oh, he does. Wow. Well. Can't ask much more than that if you side slip. Now can you dodge anything from Vader? Probably gonna eat a crit here. It's gonna be a three on two with a added crit as long as he doesn't burn the lock. Which he might if he gets like three blanks. It's probably the only situation he would though. Wow! That's gonna hurt. Ooh, this is a direct hit. Dash is gone. What's it gonna be? Direct hit. Ouch. Well, yeah. Now you've got some uh, work to do if you're Corrin. Gonna be hard to dig yourself out of this. I mean, he's in a good spot positionally, but man. Like, I think Vader will probably just two right turn and turtle. Maybe try to boost out of there. And then sure knows probably it's gonna like three left turn. Yeah. I don't think Corrin was gonna kill Vader there though. Cause that was just gonna be an unmodified four against three with a focus. So he would have had to have gotten pretty lucky there to kill Vader. Uh, and like I said, make it into uh, the team coming in aces and make it to the top four. That's an amazing accomplishment, but I just feel like 
I feel like Texas played outplayed side slip. Um, there was, uh, and you know, there's always that one turn when you look back at like the close games you play. You can always look at one turn and just be like, "God damn it! I wish I had done that other thing." And there's always points that come that where it's you're looking at one move or the other, and uh, I one of the most notable ones that everyone will always they always mention is Morgan and Heaver playing in uh, the World Championship game, and it's like turn three, and Morgan's sitting there with his Whisper Mini Swarm. Han is right there. There's a nice juicy alley for them to turn into each other and for the swarm to light him up. And, and Morgan knows that he doesn't want Han to hang around because he's just an absolutely devastating late game ship. Um, and then he's got. And then the other option is just go straight right at the less valuable target, but the safer option is uh, Paul's Tallas. And he decides to go into the asteroid field. He decides to go for Han. And Heaver four forwards and boosts out of the way of pretty much everything. And that that was basically the deciding turn right there. And really, I feel like a turn for side slip was that turn here when he turned Dash into Chirino. And I understand why he did it, because he felt like Chirino was going to turn into him and then Corrin would be able to light him up. But... It was the same thing. It was a high risk, high reward move, and it didn't pay off. And that's that's the risk you take. And, uh, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, positionally, you're, you're in a good spot if you're side slip. Because, you know, Vader, I really don't see how he could do anything else other than a two right turn. And then cheer into a three left turn. Maybe a one left bank. He could do that. Uh, but, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed you're just going to two right turn. And then you can focus. And you're probably going to be, you know, you're going to be at about range one, maybe range two. Uh, and you can get a, you can focus and take a nice juicy double tap against Snowy Son. And hope to God you get some sort of crit that is a long lasting effect. The two best would probably be injured pilot that would probably be the best uh, damaged engine would be fine you'd take that uh, weapon malfunction would be good uh, uh, yeah damage engine damage cockpit would be it'd be all right. <clears throat> That wouldn't be really a game breaker, though. <coughs> uh, there's no way Vader can K-turn there. Uh, well... Wow. He could, but I think with the lead that Tex has, I don't think he would risk... Oh my god, he is!
Oh, wow. Well. Huh. So he's going for broke. I really didn't... I th didn't think he would do that. I felt like... Since he had the lead... Uh... He wasn't going to risk doing that, but I guess... He had to have known that was gonna that wasn't going to hit. And yeah, he just wants to... Put an end to it right here. And he's... Yeah, do I get gutsy? That is the question. He is. Well, now... Now I think if I was Corrin, I would hard right turn, and I would seriously consider a boost. I mean, because normally in this situation you hate to do that, where you burn an action to just close the distance on a ship that's looking at you, but I, th I think it's very likely Chirino two turns or three turns, and if he does, you can boost, get a range one shot, load up your fire control system, and take another one with a target lock with your double tap. Now, the risk there is that Chirino just one banks and bumps Vader, but I mean, it's so, and you're behind, it's almost like you have to go for it. But I mean, uh, but the fact that he K turned Vader, mm -hmm. Yeah, these are these moves. It is 50-50 call. You know it's one or the other. You know he's one banking or he's too hard turning. And you have to make a decision. It's these 50-50, these coin flips, basically. If you guess correctly, you win. If you guess incorrectly, you lose. That's what happens these, with these great matchups. Oh, he folk. Oh, he would have blocked him too. Had he boosted. Oh, and now he's gonna eat it hard. And now, who do you go for? If you try for the miracle kill shot on Vader, you would have to roll three non blanks. And Vader would have would have to roll three non evades, which is pretty unlikely. It could happen, but there's only about a maybe a one in five chance of that happening. I think because you're only gonna roll two point two five hits on three attack dice with a focus, and with three green dice, you're gonna get like one point one seven five. Or 1.075 evades on average. And he could certainly finish Vader with the double tap. But are you going to live that long? Eh, he probably, probably will actually. Because if Chirino gets four, you're probably going to evade one. Take three. And then Vader is probably only going to get a hit and a crit. So... Oh, he's going to go for Vader. Oh, and he gets... Wow. Well, that was really best case scenario, other than if there were some crits in there. Oh, that's brutal. It was... I think Tex was kind of due for a good roll there, though. Yep. And now, Sideslip's going to have some... 
questions is to spend this focus or